Right, this is just going to be a quick little overview of uh, OS X on Windows based hardware and what's involved and what the various different files are, kind of a, a little introduction. Um, so basically, uh, really quickly, this machine, this machine itself has four monitors, although I've only got three enabled at the moment. Um, the the actual it's overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz at the moment but I've it's uh, actually no I think it's 4.3 but I've set various different stepping levels all the way up to 4.8 I think um, it's actually got two uh, if we go to system report it's actually got two graphics cards in which are a 480 and a GTX 285 um, and it's full acceleration and setup and everything's working fine until I decide to play with things and make them break and destroy them and have to fix them. Um, but anyway, let's have a brief little tour of what uh, what is actually important in this system. So we've got a boot file here. You probably can't see this unless you've specifically unhidden it. Um, but there is a a boot file on the root of my primary boot drive which is an EFI which stands for extensible firmware interface um, which I believe is derived from very old Apple code um, and the base uh, the base of it is chameleon however I'm using uh, Chimera or I think it's 1.6 off, um, off TonyMacX86.com uh, maintained by Macman. So anyway, in the extra folder, um, so first of all, when when the machine boots and I uh, I actually this is the default boot target, it will load this boot file, which then sets up OS X to boot on this hardware. And how does it do that? And I'm looking at this folder, thinking this is probably not the best folder to show you because this is mine and it's uh, full of various different little tests so let's open up one that would uh, <laughs> would look like yours so here we go we've got a dsdt.aml now this is actually a binary file um, that's ACPI compliant which is an Intel Microsoft thing um, and it stands for is it differential system description table I believe um, and what it is, is the easiest way to describe its use is it tells OS X what, what hardware is there, where it is, um, and what it's got. But not in a driver sense. This isn't, this isn't pointing out drivers. This is pointing out physical um, you know, memory addresses and locations and setting up definitions for what something will be called um, and if there's any if there's any IDs on it um, you would still need uh, kernel extensions to be able to use it it's just that it is there and ready to be used so something like the system information that I just showed you um, it's very easy to have something show up here but not have it actually working um, so for instance my graphics cards I could easily make both of them show here but not be triggered at all um, and being used or accelerated or getting full resolution um, so that's what the the DSDT is um, it is actually a high uh, this is a binary file but if I load it up um, it is actually a hierarchical file format um, which isn't brilliant to read when you're first starting out. So, for instance, uh, you know, you can instantly tell that I've got um, eight CPU uh, definitions here. I've got my main PCI uh, root, which is the host for all my PCI uh, bridges, such as my uh, primary PCIe port, uh, the secondary one. Um, and various of uh, various other different things, but this is something that you play with when you get really into 
wanting to purposefully screw your machine up at, but then fix it in a better way so anyway um, then we've got this uh, boot plist file now a plist file is kind of um, is a very easy to read XML ish um, file format so if I open it we can just see that there are various different flags and strings so if we just take one of these elements such as this here we've got the actual name of the element signified by key and then close key so that closes the fact that this name is defined uh, and then we've got a value which is in most cases going to be a string value in this unless you do something very different um, so an example of creating something in here would be in fact I, I actually don't need these anymore these P states um, so this graphics mode here has got this string value this is what allows the bootloader to uh, you know to show me 1600 by 1800 uh, 1600 by 800 sorry graphics enable and no um, this is because I do most of the stuff in the DSDT and graphics enabler is only for single cards single card injection so if I turn that to yes my machine would actually kernel panic on start uh, and very quickly as well um, something ah kernel flags so these are the flags passed to the kernel but I know for a fact that NPCI uh, can actually be its own uh, its own definition so if I were to do that I would just say key then it would uh, it would be NPCI and then close key and then the string value would be open string and close string but the value itself would be 0x2000 now that here is exactly the same as writing npci equals so it's this equals uh, which is obviously missing from here because we pass it the value and we can imagine an, an imaginary equals here um, so that's that's just a brief overview of the boot settings file and then we've got a uh, SM bias uh, file which is also a plist um, which is basically telling OSX various different I mean a lot of this you should ignore this this is just for my own vanity um, and this isn't actually a, a, an SM bias that I'm using either at the moment I don't think uh, I can really I can tell fairly quickly by saying oh I am actually and I shouldn't be so my machine thinks it's an iMac because of this this setup now very importantly this iMac 12.2 definition and the serial are not something that you can idly switch around so it's not to say that I, I can get my machine to kernel panic if I was using something like Mac uh, Mac Pro 4.1 so it's not something that you want to use because you want to see something you know a pretty picture in here it's actually what's best for your hardware so an example of how this is used is uh, when OSX starts up and it uses its kernel extensions various different things gets get passed to the kernel extensions such as identifiers so that the machine can set itself up to deal with the various different hardware. Now the problem with OS X in general uh, using this and us using PC hardware is OS X is for a very finite amount of hardware configuration so it's very easy um, to manage except our PCs, our Windows based kits have a lot of different um, uh, options so it's it's not wise to play with this it's wise to play with an SM bias that passes minimal information um, so the case here would be I should be using Mac 3.31 uh, if I was using Mac 4.1 my machine would kernel panic and the reason for that I shall just show you right now if I go back into here most kernel extensions in fact all kernel extensions uh, in system library extensions now a kernel extension is a .kext folder not file 
these are actually folders. It's just that with the .kext extension, they show us these little childhood Lego blocks. Um, but something in here, such as, let's say, Apple, oops, Apple Graphics Power Management. So something like this K, uh, K extension gets loaded. Now, if we look inside this folder at the content and then the info P list, there's something that we've got to be very aware of, and that's these IO kit personalities. So input, output and the module itself and all these are defined so let's say I did choose something like Mac Pro 5.1 for instance no that's a phantom in fact all of these I, I've set up to be used but let's say I chose let's say iMac uh, 11.2 we have a look and it's got a certain definition for the what what the CAD should be identified as the graphics card and then in here it's got a controller ID itself which it can look up in various other different libraries in order to control power management for the card and what, and what you call G state stepping so in other words if the cards in idle state it doesn't constantly suck 200 watts or in the case of me the 480 sucking 300 watts of power if it's not in heavy use it doesn't need that so therefore something like Windows would step it down something like OS X would step it down but only if it's defined in here now the problem about using one of these profiles whereby your card isn't uh, isn't um, defined in here oh here we go so this is the threshold and temperature well this is the load threshold and what it would be doing but the problem here is if I chose Mac uh, iMac 11 1 I do not have anything defined as GFX 0 for one thing so it will look in here and not and and want to load this because an iMac 11 1 has this and a certain type of ATI card and it will try and load it but with my machine it will kill and panic so that's the problem with using various different uh, SM BIOS files. The brilliant thing about Mac Pro 3.1 is there are no definitive IO kit personalities for the graphics card management so therefore it won't crash and that's why it's always the safest to use. Um, just really quickly in here I've got two themes you can download themes um, and what you can do is if we go in here we've got a theme key and we can just change that to be oh I shall duplicate it then we can change that to be something like me and basically it just corresponds to the folder name in your themes directory so you can have different themes or create your own custom ones um, and that's kind of a brief overview of what what the primary core components are to um, setting well having a nice running uh, OS X on uh, Windows hardware